All right, I took a break from listening to Kate Bush and uh, Wuthering Heights to record this because I'm just genuinely offended right now. So, I'm a post-graduate student, uh, well, post-undergraduate student, and, you know, I've uh, been applying to jobs because I've been genuinely uh, burnt out on the uh, school experience. Um, you know, I think with anything you do for you know, 18 years or so, you kind of become disaffectionate towards it. And uh, some of the flaws may seem more glowing to you than uh, the other average person. Um, but I digress. And the uh, working have been pretty much reached uh, hitting a wall consistently of a lack of either formal work experience or, uh, I guess, requisite... Um, I guess, model or project experience. Like, I, I do IT kind of related stuff. So, formal experience forms everything right now. Like, even in this kind of dearth of, uh, you know, minimum wage jobs, something higher than that, um, actual formal, like, industry jobs, not to, you know, um, denigrate uh, minimum wage jobs. Uh, minimum wage jobs are pretty much the backbone of the economy in many ways. But, more skilled jobs, so to speak, I guess, um, have still kind of beholden themselves to a certain, you know, tier uh, or kind of baseline of work experience. So with that being uh, the case, I know that grad school kind of offsets work experience. I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't want to do grad school, but, you know, I'll do it. I mean, not completely against the idea of it, but I was like, okay, let's see what's up. So there's some places that are uh, schools near my area. You know, I uh, applied to three because if I can't get one out of three, <laughs> fuck it. Why am I doing this? Um, so I got applied. I got accepted to one today. Um, another one, the issue is the fucking transcript system, which I could do a whole video about that. But the transcript system for my graduate, uh, my university I graduated from, uh, just a bunch of bullshit. So I'm at the pay more money to do another fucking transcript order and send it out to them. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I can accept that if I got to accept the other one. And in this one, which was the highest uh, information systems caliber in my state, uh, also the squad graduated from, so you think they'd be a little bit more lenient, uh, they, they'll waive you the application fee, which is like $75, which is bullshit of itself. But $75 from them to look at it and say, hey, either you get it in or you don't get it. If you don't get in, you'll get $75 back, so go fuck yourself. But... Okay, uh, so so there's there's that which you know a little bit of a little bit of red herring I guess, and then you get to the standardized testing portion uh, of kind to of uh, kind of evaluating the applicant. Now listen, I was a malcontent for the initial standardized testing that is the SAT and the ACT, which is now amazingly starting to be phased out. You know, four years after I uh, initially attended uh, college, you know, freshman year. Um, that's great, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be one of those guys that, like, good shit happens after they leave that level of their life, and then they're salty about it, I don't think anybody should take an SAT or an ACT, it's the most ridiculous shit of all time, usually bar none, the most ridiculous, I mean, more often than not, and this is a standardized testing for the GMAT, uh, you know, and I think that this article is going to be more for, like, the high school standardized test, but I'm just perusing through it. Um, this shit has a certain inherent barrier to entry for, for a lot of, um, you know, kind of uh, lesser, I, I don't want to say lesser, like, schools or lesser school systems, but if you tend to look at it, schools come out the pocket to waive, um, your like initial like your junior year uh ACT, which I think everybody that I knew of had a, a waiver for that first one. Um and the the subsequent ones you kinda of come with the box for yourself, I think. Um ridiculous. Uh because a lot of people can't afford that, the future ones. And also most public school systems do not study for the SAT or the ACT. Yeah, I know you get like multiple standardized testing at your uh you know your your general school tenure uh public school tenure but like as far as like actual studying for what's on the uh the act or sat none of that shit like even the books i was in the honors courses 
uh, through pretty much throughout, like as, as soon as honors course existed in my public school system, uh, I was in those. We never even had like the free, like the ACT books that, you know, a higher level school may give you. We never got those for free, which they're like pretty fucking pricey, but um, we never even got those. So like those are pretty much the primary way that a private school may offload teaching. Uh, they may have an entire course that does teaching because I went to a private school my last two years and they actually had an entire course where they taught you uh, essentially the shit like verbatim that's going to be on that test. Most public school systems don't have that shit. So right, right there is a barrier in and of itself. If you don't have the same level of uh, time dedicated study, which this was a trimester system, but we still pretty much went from, I think, August to May. They found time to have you do that course. Um, you know, I, I feel like that should be something that should be just about in every public school system. And that says you're not, you, you do this, this whole, the whole, um, I guess, support that I see from the standardized testing system is that it's it's a blind, uh, uh, like a blind test, basically. Like, race is eliminated, even though it's not in the grand scheme of things. I mean, like, if you look at it, this SAT is tied to this applicant. It's not like you're just shoving in an SAT or ACT score. Like, if it was that, it'd be different. But in some way, I'm not even saying that necessarily it would help the... Um, the individual with the better resources, they fit a quota. You may have a, you know, minority that tests a little bit lower, but in a general range, they can still accept that person so they can fit a certain quota. I'm not saying one way or the other, you know, who gets in because of this whole uh, diluted blind test, blind score situation, but I think many people still get uh, advantaged by it. But anyway, um, I lost what the fuck I was at. Um... Yeah, anyway, so it's, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's blind. But the point being, a lot of lower school systems don't get the studying, don't even the courses, don't even get the books. Um, so they are automatic disadvantage. And then I don't think you take another free one outside that junior year. So you take that shit for, the most, for many public school systems, that's it. And I would imagine that attitude for many kids, because many kids, I don't think, get put onto the importance of, of acing that fucking thing when you can take it because you can still take it after you know school, but you don't have the same resources to even like even like I say you don't get any resources at all as far as like the books and shit like that. But like even just as far as having a math question and be able to go to a math teacher and just say, hey, I have this question about this that I graded badly on. Um, you don't have to have to graduate obviously, so that's a lot harder. Uh, <laughs> and then I mean it's gonna be a stigma, automatic societal stigma on uh, being like. 19 and taking the SAT for the first time like that's there too so it's pretty much all centered for the public school system that junior year sophomore year uh, ACT and if you fuck that up then just keep it moving you fucking suck at it uh for many people and there's you know some people that are going to take the onus upon themselves to to um just go out their way and find some, some tutor or all that shit but I think the idea with further education is that it should be uh, pushed upon everybody if possible and not just one time and then not have absolutely one time. It should be a situation in which everybody has a fucking chance to a really just strong, fair chance to fucking get at least a passable score to get into a college. But if they did that and I guess these colleges should be able to fucking preach exclusivity or superiority to the ones who get in, which is a fucking massive thing that we now tie back into this part. Grad school standardized testing, GRE to GMAT. Fucking ridiculous. Um, I just, I'm not basing this off a of Reddit post, but I've been looking at a Reddit post because I like confirmation bias. Um, I admit what I like. If I'm biased, I like to admit it. Anyway, so this guy here goes into debt. Seems to be a big smarty pants when it comes to math. Um, and we kind of skimmed through the rest of this to kind of get to this part. So this guy takes the test does not study whatsoever, seems to be more than capable of doing all the calculus and, and linear algebra and all that stuff, um, which is, if you haven't taken, like, shit like, uh, you know, I don't know, Algebra 2, um, you know, stuff like that, uh, Calculus 1, uh, this is shit you don't, you don't remember very quickly if it's not implied to your further courses. Like, I had to take those courses 
Uh, I think my last one was like early sophomore year, even though I, I took fucking pre-cal like my last year in high school, which I was a little bit delayed on that because I didn't give a shit about math. But um, I should have took Cal 1 my freshman year, but because my placement test wasn't good enough from uh, uh, almost at the schools, I don't want to I don't want to burn the school up because I, it's still applying to them. I don't want to get fucking rejected because of a YouTube video. But um, <laughs> because I fucked their placement test up, I had to redo like the entire math curriculum. And I aced all that shit because I already knew it. I just placed badly because I can't fucking test well. Uh, I'm, sh I'm shitty at testing. Uh, <laughs> but I did it again in the college level. I aced it all. And then I got a cow. And I was like, okay. This still wasn't hard because I did pre-cow. And the cow one still was I think I got an A in cow one. Um, I still like to say that, like, the whole placement test idea, idealism, is bullshit, too. But, uh... This stuff just, as he uh, kind of expounds on a little bit more, he severely underestimated the time component. Um, you know, they say it's like everybody gets put into like a fucking, you know, one open building and everybody's the same. There's no, there's no uh, race, there's no gender, there's no money, none of that stuff. Everybody's equalized. The shit about it is, <laughs> it's the time component. I don't know why you need the time component. Like, I think you should be able to take this in a building, like on some kind of watch device that to make sure you don't cheat. Obviously, that's important. But the time component, it's literally like saying, like, if this is a job and you're doing like a wonderlick, which is something I just recently did. I took a basically an ACT, but a you know wonderlick uh, kind of test um, for a job interview. They want to see how quick you can think on your feet critical thinking, all that, fine, but for a fucking, t a, 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 a grad school, which means you already showed to some degree that you could do, as uh, shown, but I said showed, um, showed, shown, whatever, shown that you had some, co some capacity to do math, even if you cheated, I don't even understand how hard it is to cheat through math, like, there's enough curveballs in a general math course that were, you're gonna trip up at least one good time, you're not going to get an A nine times out of ten by purely cheating in a college math course. Now, in high school, math course pretty easy. I cheated through an entire one, and it was pretty easy. I got an A. But in college, uh, especially nowadays where everything is on, on computer, cheating on computer is possible, but the thing is curveballs. I've had one time where I had three tests using one... Um, you know, an honor lock, proctor you, blah, 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 that type of, a lock browser type situation. And then the finals on a different one. Or they'll do like three tests online, I'll do a final in person. There's always one, and I'm talking nine out of ten, let me say nine out of ten, I always. Nine out of ten times, there's always one thing there that these teachers look for, like some opportunity to trip you up. And that's why you don't get a, A, you get like a fucking low B or high C from like purely cheating. Maybe a mid to high B if, it's not a bad trip up. Like it's like intermediate algebra last test. Um, it's like a comp uh, comp compilation of the first three tests and like one extra chapter. You may be able to bullshit into like an eighty and get like an eighty five on the course. Okay, but like people say, like you get like an A out of like just purely cheating. It's bullshit, dude. You don't need to isolate the potential of cheating throughout the entirety of four years of college. If you're that good at cheating, you're probably pretty good at cheating on a fucking next level, too. But I digress. Um, <laughs> anyway, going to what this dude says. Uh, the biggest aspect of here was time. But I don't think there's that much value in trying to scam individuals out of their ability to think with more time. I mean, like it's just it's just mind-blowing. You, you won't, even if you have to take math on the next level, you won't ever be in a situation to which like, you'll be stripped of like the ability to like have a formula right by you some shit like that like that that's outside of a test obviously but in just normal day-to-day -day in a math course you won't be like restricted like hey no formulas no you know i'm not obviously the internet i don't know about every maybe someplace will let you use the internet i'm not sure but to have to like derive everything off the top of your dome that doesn't happen in, in, in any math course ever um and then we get to what's really, you know, this isn't this isn't the the, the linchpin of why I did this video, but it's huge to me. Um, 
like the fee the fee the fee automatically explicitly i don't care what anybody says explicitly becomes a barrier to most people getting to that grad school level of education and hurts people intrinsically to that entry level um and they tested amazingly during all four years of college did perfectly blah 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 they get herded down to that shitty most base level of pay at a job when they're applying because they can't even get into grad school and they wanted to even if they had all the intangibles to get into grad school and some of those people will because they have nice professors the school record uh, acknowledges who they are as a student some probably one percent to five percent of those students will just be given a GRE or GMAT waiver, but ninety percent of them are fucked as far as trying to get that for this. Because if you have a school, especially in COVID times, that is pushing for a GRE or GMAT, they are fucking pieces of shit. That's not me saying any specific school is that, but if they are pushing for that to that degree, they are pieces of shit. Because like I said. Even with the, uh, as, as akin to the SAT, ACT, we are seeing that it is unnecessary for a lot of schools to have to, to even make you take this. As I said, two out of three schools I applied to do not care about that. Do not, and it's not that they don't get applicants. They aren't as exclusive as this school I'm applying to that I'm mainly uh, offended about, but they are getting a healthy amount of applicants they do have some pick of the litter, not the same amount, but some pick of the litter. It's nonsensical if you can't. I think I think the owner should be put on if these grad schools are that um, stringent, um, you know, think that highly of themselves, of their their uh, base of people, of, of applicants, of potential um, acceptance. Then I think they should create their own rigorous, maybe not a test, but series of uh, qualifications that you have to meet, um, because they can afford to. They have the manpower to do so. Even in COVID times, trust me, I've been in conversation with every kind of grad admissions council you can think of. I've seen behind the curtains as much as you probably could without actually going behind the curtains. Um, I mean, they can figure out a way to cut some of the fat off without having to throw you to a fucking fire of $250, which, you know, I don't know if, you know, you might be privileged watching this, you might be poor watching this, you know, it could be anybody. That's the good thing about YouTube is everybody has access to it. A lot of people do not have $250 to waste on a potentially good score and a potential acceptance uh, and two a school because you can also place into general range a school wants you to place into and still get rejected you can study as much as you want to in this test and still fuck the test up because you are not good at test taking and then, hey guess what <laughs> there's no way around being you know bad test taking if you want to get into a school that requires this shit i just had a conversation these motherfuckers will not let you in <laughs> i'm saying that right now they will not even look at that fucking outfit they won't even let you know that that application is not being looked at until you ask them why the application is being looked at because you thought there's supposed to be a waiver and they was like hey motherfucker there ain't no waiver do this finish the application man i don't have to tell you finish the application <laughs> you know how to finish the application I, 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 I don't need to tell you how you know how to finish it point up that 250 dollars and maybe maybe you become a better test taker, test taker than you've been uh your entire life and if you're not sorry <laughs> I mean, literally, I don't think that any privately owned business should have to lower their standards. But I do think that it's it's a ton of people that fall to the wayside that are calib that are definitely caliber of attending certain schools that don't because of the both financial and mental barriers that a GM GMAT GRE presents. That's all I'm saying. Maybe, probably even likely. There's more people that that would try to, you know, get around that, get around the lack of having to pay or just lack of having to even take the test and be bad grad students and poorly represent the school. I would say probably even a highly likely um, percentage, 
highly, highly, higher percentage of those than that higher percentage of good caliber people that just are thrown to the wayside. I can admit that. But all I'm saying is anything that's intrinsically pushing off people that are trying to go to grad school and better themselves, which let me tell you right now, most people who are applying for grad school, they've been tortured for four fucking years, especially those last two. If they're trying to apply to that shit, <laughs> they really want to go to that shit. Like, there's some that might be like, you know, I'm tr going to army just to, you know, get my fucking bands up and get a job and get some benefits and shit. But there's not a high amount of those. There's might be like 1% of those fucking people that are doing that shit just because they have to, because they're filled or whatever. So those people, okay, chop them off, whatever. But that's a very low percentage of people. Very, very low. Anyway, uh, let's look at some more or Reddit articles. I have one more quality of this that uh, I kind of want to get into, but quality of this discussion, but we'll look into this. Um, Set for me for sure to GMAT. Set for this daily for over one and a half years, and I feel as if I haven't made any appreciable progress. Um, The math subject, which... The math section appears to be pretty shitty. This, uh, I think it's a general uh, GMAT that um, just tests like an ACT, basically a harder ACT. But it's also like a explicit subject like math, English, whatever, which I would imagine um, if you are applying certain more analytical fields, maybe you just only take a math subject. If you're applying like a, I don't know, a higher English, grad, I don't know what the fuck you do there, but an English exclusive fucking grad school, like a journalism school, something like that. You take an English subject or rating subject, maybe something like that. I don't know. Um, holy shit, there's a lot of material. That means that even after a week, most much of what I learned is lost on me. Um, the review and teaching section are good if we're going over basic problems, but then they throw you much more difficult. Say it's 600, 700 level questions that they haven't taught you how to do. A lose from 700 plus score. Let's see. Let's see the scale of um. At the GMAT. GMAT test score. Right. I don't know if I should just take a, a just a general practice GMAT to see how bad it is. So 200, 800. So if you're like 700, you're like pretty much. About, you know, an A, a student or A applicant, however you want to look at that. I don't know. I'm, I feel like it's kind of, I don't want to get too political, but I feel like this kind of falls in line with the general problem with this, this um, country, period. Both the economy um, and the workforce and many other ways. That middle section of people, which, you know, it's a larger section. That middle section, the average person, is being completely phased out. The middle class, the tenured worker that's not no longer an uh, entry but not yet a senior level executive. That middle person is just being shitted on, dude. I don't think the school is doing enough to the school. I don't think this country is doing enough in its various uh, whoring industries to raise that middle class up. And that's why you start seeing that middle class start start trending downward because fucking people can't get you know people can't get raised so they, what do they call it social elevation um social you know upper mobility that whole ideology is not there across the board in america right now uh it's something to do with the fact that there's so much variation type of problems you could get and how difficult it will be overall that really gets the nerves going that's what I'm saying that I'm reading in the, these few articles I'm looking at or post uh, is that somebody <laughs> this part is funny. Somebody uh, could get thrown like a, I guess a 400 quote unquote level uh, math problem. They throw like 10 of those. And for the last five, they had like 800 score math problems. What is that testing for? If you can like be throwing a fucking curveball to the fucking jaw and not get knocked the fuck out because that's what that is. That's the equation of like jab, jab, jab in a boxing fight. And then someone just throws like fucking Jotaro, D, uh, Jotaro Kujo from fucking 
uh, JoJo's. You're stuck a fucking like aura, aura, aura combo to the fucking dome piece. And you're supposed to have the defensive level <laughs> to fucking catch those? Like, <laughs> that's what this is essentially asking. I mean, me, I've attempted a GMAT twice to score 610. You can spawn the figure both times. And MCAT's an official practice exam. So I scored up around 700. I think the question is quant. What the fuck is quant? What are you doing with the practice? What the fuck is quant? <laughs> well, I took me a verbal. <laughs> what the hell is quant? Oh, because I go over testing multiple passes. First, all the quick and easy questions. Then go back to all the harder for the lane questions. That's what I think all of us do pretty much. Then go back and work. Uh, do the hardest parts require rigorous really thinking to work. That strategy obviously does not work for the GMAT. I hate I've been to flip through. You can't flip through. What the hell is the GMAT book style? Let's see if I can get some easy answers on my first question. What? You can't do that? What the hell is wrong with this motherfucker? However, you can, and obviously you can see right here, 760. Here, okay, I'm just gonna get into this now. If you are, uh, it, it's the same fucking way. It's the, the, the way that Sandra Don's test is viewed. This is my last, like, little, you know, soapbox moment. The same way the fucking standardized test is given the high school level, ACT, SAT. The great majority of people who defend that shit are people who test well in it. They pretty much are completely uh, disaffectionate towards the people who can't test well in that shit, who uh, are just unable to conceive of that stuff because of prior courses just not teaching them what they need to be taught, school system not helping them, whatever. The loudest voices controlling the, the viewpoint for GMAT and GRE have been students, you know, parents of quote unquote smart students, um, and the school systems that get to be exclusive uh, because they have a ton of people who are willing to take a GMAT and GRE to get into that school. Those fucking, that, that subset of people are fucking pieces of shit. They are ignorant to the fucking problems of the average person. However, you can take the Gmail up to eight times and no repercussion to the feasible exam. Motherfucker. <laughs> I, I, I got you on this one. I got you on this one. It's 250. This Well, GRE. 250 times 8. And let's say it's 8 for GRE too. I don't know because I don't give a fuck. But I got you on this math one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you how, how I work it out. 8 times 250, right? I got you, I got you, I got you. 250 times 2, what is that? That's 500, right? Yeah. How many times is 2 going to 8? 4. 4. What numbers look good? 4 and 5, because that's 20. That's simple. That's simple math. So you add the two zoo, two, no, no, stay with me. Two zeros to it. <laughs> stay with me. <laughs> two times. <laughs> oh my god. Stay with me. Four times five is twenty. You have the two zeros. That's two thousand. That's two thousand goddamn dollars that you are throwing to the fucking wayside. <laughs> and you say that's fucking no repercussions. You are a fucking mor Let's look at the average of fucking salary in, in, in the U.S. for a second. No repercussions, right? $2,000. No repercussions. $56,000, right? $56,000. Do you think... And that, that's, what this, that's what this is. The average annual wage, right? The median average wage, which is about the middle, which, I mean, doesn't really go to say anything, but... Thirty-four thousand is the median average wage. Um, I don't think somebody living off of fifty-six thousand can just say, "I'm gonna take two thousand out of that," and then just throw it at this. And I'm not gonna use the calculator on this one. I, I can't do this show. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I can't do this one. Uh, fifty-six thousand divided by twelve. So that's forty-six, forty. It was forty-seven hundred um, every given month. They're taking half what they make. Any given month, not an exact half for any GRE, uh, you know, studious people out there, um, but about two and a half. And they are setting that aside to fuck up on a GRE. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. There's no repercussions. Go fuck yourself. Um, 
It, I mean, it's like a G Max. Like these are cocksuckers that are gonna like brown those for G Max. Like I mean, I'm aware of the the audience uh, being uh, doing the preaching here. Uh, I've been stuck with Stupid Zone for over two years now. Two years. I can't come to this, near the 650 without cheating doing a mock test. Golly. Uh, they invented it to make it hard for uh, people, especially non-native, to join these schools, which are required to make documents take a ton of money for applications. There you go. Barrier. Yep. As for the GMOD, the understanding by test are used to level playing field. There are going to be a benefit for some international students who come from unknown schools for foreign countries. You want to school the true GPI and academic capability or also, in ESL schools, we have little picture English propaganda. Look at this shit, dude. <laughs> in my honest opinion, if you're really displeased with studying and taking tests, then you're going back to school isn't for you. You are forcing yourself through the part time studying examinations that you hate. Also, you can have a chance doing full time studying examinations. That really makes sense. There are plenty of ways in which you credit not required expensive schooling. What a fucking cocksucker. The GMAS subreddit has been pretty great in my school the past six months. We'll help you reach out. <laughs> what a fucking... I mean, it's the GMAS... It's the GMAS sub, subreddit, whatever. Venting. Eat a fucking dick, you piece of shit. <laughs> Venting. What a f Oh, look, look down, poor this fucking dude, cause he can't fucking do a Gmail. Oh, he must automatically hate the idea of going back to school because he can't test well. Because if you can test well, that means you want to go back to school. Correlation is there. Correlation is there. Goodness gracious. Almost all of us are ever given in India, excluding ones that are at national or international scale, require massive organization efforts and handling much more testing than test takers, which he already does. I think millions each of the 30 states in India. It's like fucking 2 billion people in India. Uh, so that makes sense. We're all priced around 100, 500 rupees. His point being that people, even when they're having to go through explicitly more uh, work and stress to organize that shit, it costs them really less. Uh, what GRE does, uh, it costs an astronomically ridiculous 15,800 rupees and this idiot tries to go against that by saying it's a GRE required to Indian universities that doesn't belie the point the point is it doesn't show up the cost that much the requirement of doing it doesn't make much sense because as he said far more goes into it because there's fucking 8 billion people in India that's not me insulting India. There's just a lot of fucking people there. So it's going to take a lot more work to organize that. These motherfuckers sit with like 10 people in a classroom. And they pass you their fucking books. And they're like fucking... I, I had one guy who was like a fucking uh, a PE teacher. That gave like gave my ACT. Why the fuck is a PE teacher? <laughs> He's going to pay to fucking play on the fucking Pop Tropica for three hours. <laughs> And, he, and I gotta pay fucking a uh, uh, hundred dollars for that shit. I think it's like a hundred dollars for like an ACT score. I don't remember how much or ACT test. Um, and you take jury to go to U.S. universities again. It's not his fucking point. Uh, this the fucking people out here place seven hundred dollars, seven hundred on the damn GRE score, or GMAT score. Can't understand what the fuck simple English is, is saying. Um, I don't know. They have, they have to pay more, apparently. They have to pay more for what another point that was thrown on there. They have to pay more for GRE in India, um, even though their own individualized, like, higher level testing is, like, half of that. Well, as he put, like, one fifteenth of that. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just American superiority. Um, I really don't want to make this any longer. It's been 30 minutes, 34 minutes. I could have ran for another 30 minutes, to be honest with you. Um, GMAT is dumb as shit. Uh, one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Um, it is intrinsically uh, very, very appreciative of the skills of a student that just is not good at test taking, but is good at everything else a student should be good at. Um, 
is a replacement for what I think is an equally ridiculous system, which is getting work experience. If I don't have <laughs> the, the work experience, I get to go to grad school, but I can't go to grad school if I don't have this certain level. I don't want to recap the entire video. This is fucking ridiculous. I think lesser so than the experience part. Like the experience part is bad, but like like less bad. The 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 grad section, the the, the grad part of this whole component is fucking ridiculous. I think there should be a replacement holistically for what it is asking of the equating um of people from different walks of life, students from different walks of life. I think there can be a replacement for that, and I think that there will be within the next 10 or 15 years. I think mean, ACTs are out the window first, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I would imagine that if you follow the tea leaves, it's pretty much been the way things have been going for the past two or three years or so. Pretty much the only good thing out of COVID is that that has been exacerbated. Um, and also, any, any school that's operating amongst their contemporaries that do not ha require the GMAT right now, GMAT or GRE, and they still are fucking horrible people. Horrible people running that top to bottom. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. That's all I'm saying, though. I don't know. I don't know. I just think that's something to keep in mind.